Hello everyone, my name is Josie Lizardo, m and &E Technical Specialist with Autodesk. The following screencast is a workflow between Autodesk Inventor and Autodesk 3ds Max 2016. So in Max 2016, we've added a lot of new features that are really going to help facilitate um, interop between Inventor and Max. So let's get started with the workflow. This is the model that we're going to be importing inside of 3ds Max. And if I come here to my assembly view, you see we have some constraints set up. So if I right click on one of these constraints and play back the driving animation, this is the animation or the constraint that we're going to be sending over into 3ds Max. So back inside of 3ds Max, I'm going to locate my import button and I'm going to import my mixer assembly um, on disk. In the import dialog, we have a new option here for importing driving animation. And when I enable this checkbox, the driving animation section below appears and I can select which constraint I want to bring into Max. In this case, we're going to bring in Rotational 1. We're going to hit OK. And now our model is imported inside of Max. If I play back my timeline here, you see that the constraint and the driving animation did come through quite nicely. Also, another little side note, something else that we added inside of Max 2016 is uh, the ability to recursively open groups. So if I select this object here, you see that it is every assembly is uh, uh, combined into a group. And if I wanted to reach lower levels of the assembly, I would have to do multiple ungroupings. Um, in Max 2016, we now have the ability to open a group recursively. So this is going to go ahead and open all of these subgroups within uh, the group, and I can go ahead and select different components on my geometry. When I am satisfied, I can go back and hit uh, select any one of these guys here and hit close. Um, so at this point now, what I want to do is uh, some, start, uh, some visualization. I might want to do some material exploration, so explore different alternatives, different color, uh, color schemes on the mixer machine, and I want to uh, potentially output those different uh, material alternatives into different renders and show to my customer. Uh, so to do so, I want to introduce you guys to a brand new system inside of Max 2016 called the Start of Templates. So if I come over to my welcome screen here, you see that we have a new startup template section. Um, in here, uh, we have we ship with four out-of-the-box templates. These templates basically come pre-configured with uh, render settings, uh, lighting settings, environment settings, everything you need to quickly get uh, to a compelling visualization, all pre-configured in these uh, startup templates. Uh, of course, it doesn't end there. The idea is really to allow you to create your own templates, um, import templates, share templates with other team members, so if I open up the template manager here, you see this is where I would go in and configure um, all my templates or create a new template for that matter. Um, I can select one of these and copy it and start from there. I can create a brand new one by hitting the add new button, point it to a max file. Of course, that max file is where all the settings would live. So all my render settings, all my lighting settings. Basically, I would build a scene the way I want to always start up in, and then I would always have that um, as my startup configuration. I went ahead and created my own custom template. It's basically a spin-off of the um, sample studio scene template that ships uh, with Max. And I've called it custom uh, studio template. So we're gonna go ahead and load that one up. And here is the template as I've uh, defined it. So my idea behind this particular template is I wanted to create a startup configuration that would help non-Max users feel a little bit more comfortable with the product and, and, and it be a little less daunting. So what I did is I consolidated all of the, oops, all of the um, settings, all of the lighting settings of the scene into this one dialog here. So as a non-Max user, I start up Max, I load up this template, and then I open up the parameter collector, and all the settings that I need to adjust lighting, rendering, exposure are all here consolidated into this one uh, dialog. So I have controls for the three individual lights in my scene. I can pivot them, I can rescale them, I can change their temperature, their intensity, I can even add a filter color if I want some more funky um, results. And I have a global exposure setting here to globally uh, adjust the exposure of my scene. Uh, so at this point now I'm going to merge in my uh, mixer model that I previously saved out. So we're just going to bring this into our scene. Hit OK. I can use a select and place tool to quickly position my model on my pedestal as such. I can get closer to my model, maybe rotate it a little bit, something like that. And now I'm ready to start exploring some different material alternatives. So to do so, I'm going to launch Mental Ray Active Shade. This is uh, this uh, Mental Ray Active Shade comes pre-configured in this template that I've created. And now I can color pick my uh, material into my material editor. 
bring that into focus, and I can start adjusting, uh, for example, the paint color. I might want something maybe a little bit more blue, a little bit more green. I want to see what this looks like. As I make these changes to the material, those changes are automatically propagated and updated in my render view. This is what Active Shade is allowing me to do. I can also, for example, go back into my parameter collector and maybe make some modifications to the light. I might want to have a slightly more warmth color coming through from one of my light sources. Make that change and that, up, that change gets updated into the render view window automatically. Um, once I'm done and I've explored a few different choices, I might want to output those uh, different alternatives into renders. So I'm going to use uh, under lighting and rendering state sets to do so. State sets allows me to record multiple different states of my scene, in this case, different material alternatives. So uh, with these three states already defined here, I'm going to hit the green check the green arrow next to red. This just recorded the fact that the red material is applied to this um, to this object. I'm going to copy it over into a new material slot. I'm going to call this yellow. I'm going to go into the material and change it to a yellow material. I'm going to enable the yellow state and I'm going to apply this to the mixer machine. And then I'm going to copy it over one more time, call this blue and change the color to a, blue, a bluish tint, enable the blue state, and apply this uh, material to the mixer. So now as I toggle between these, these three states, I've now saved uh, all the three different color schemes for my mixer. Once I'm happy with this and I want to output these into renders, all I need to do is right click on state sets, select render all states. This is going to go ahead and, and start a render job which will render all three states contiguously and I don't have to babysit um, and, and start up these renders manually. Once I'm satisfied I can come into uh, my uh, folder here and I have my three images ready to show my customer. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.